Donald Trump is now embarked upon an ego trip of such epic and international impact that we should all be very, very scared. Um, that That's the bridge I'll die on, so to speak. I, you, you'd have to provide some pretty epic evidence that, that he's not in order to make me think again. Kim Jong-un, I only know what I've been told by the Western media. Um, and more importantly, by NGOs and charities and human rights organizations that, that seek to get on the ground in places like that, um, you know, starvation level, uh, poverty in many parts of, of that particular country. But I don't know much about North Korea. I, I wouldn't want to live there. And he does appear to, to knock off anybody that displeases him. So you would think... Well, two years ago, three years ago, when, when there was still a sort of broad consensus on the fact that the earth was round and the sun would come up in the morning. Now they get called alternative facts by people like Kellyanne Conway. A couple of years ago, there would have been a broad consensus, wouldn't there? That, uh, <laughs> I mean, who's even the good guy? Who, who's even the goodies? Do we have to get into bed with America if Donald Trump does decide to undertake military action against North Korea? Or if he has to respond to military action that North Korea undertake because he's provoked them, do we have to get involved in that because we're so desperate to be in bed with America for trade reasons post-Brexit? That'd be great, wouldn't it? Brexit leads us into a nuclear war. <laughs> and, I, I mean, the likelihood of setting off a nuclear missile, there's a very, very worrying report, I think it was in the New York Times, about in the run-up, um, to the election, he, he, when you start having meetings with the national security advisers, and, and Trump was obsessed with the question of why they had nuclear bombs if they never used them. So this little sort of man-child brain can't process nuanced thought. It can't do complicated, sophisticated thought. Actually, scratch complicated and sophisticated. He can't really do thinking. Uh, the, the, the briefing notes he gets given, if they're more than half a page long, his advisers now know that he won't read them. Half a page is about the limit of his, his attention span. So when you tell him he's got a nuclear bomb, he doesn't understand why he can't use it. He doesn't understand the kind of curiously contradictory nature of deterrent. Why have you got a nuclear bomb? Well, so that the other fellow doesn't use his. Well, what if we didn't have a nuclear bomb? Well, then the other fellow might. It's not, it's not necessarily watertight logic, but it's the history. It's the historical rationale of a deterrent. Um, I can't ask you, can I, without answering the question myself? <sighs> Yeah, I think it's possible. I really do. I, I find the White House in particular so uh, absolutely impenetrable to understand how anybody can feel anything but uh, at best, I suppose, disgust and at worst abject terror when they look at what is happening in that particular cradle of democracy. I guess I, I think anything's possible now. Absolutely anything. If, if you can hire somebody to go onto Fox News and say that you're the finest orator in the history of the world, or words to that effect, when, frankly, you can't even string a sentence together, literally you can't string a sentence together, then, yeah, I think anything's possible. And I think his regard for human life, any human life except his own, seems to be just sort of twisted to a point where I find it terrifyingly plausible that our oldest ally, or our greatest ally is led by a man who I think is probably perfectly capable of starting a war just to satisfy his own ego and distract the American people from the growing evidence of epic corruption and collusion at the heart of his administration.